welcome back to uh, the channel. Today we are taking on um, uh, Eric Ten Hag and his potential move. Well, I guess it's not potential anymore. By the time I finally got around to uh, recording this, um, his confirmed move to Manchester United uh, from Ajax. I wanted to do something uh, a little bit different here. So what we decided to do was play out, um, uh, kind of develop a, t a tactic that mirrored his tactics to the best of my ability and then we wanted to um, uh, see how we performed at uh, we'll do a full season at Ajax and then move that manager uh, over to Manchester United um, for what would be uh, the 2022-2023 season to kind of mirror what's going to happen uh, here in real life because again we had the full season from the, the point that football manager starts uh, Eric Ten Hag has a full season at Ajax and then in real life moves to Manchester United. Uh, so that's what we did here. We played out the entire season at uh, Ajax with a um, kind of a holding manager in the background at Manchester United that kind of kept things frozen uh, as to what their the current state of the team is right now. So they didn't make any transfers out in or out. Um, the squad mirrored the uh, you know the, the present day Manchester United, and then. Uh, once we completed our season at Ajax, we moved that manager over to Manchester United um, and basically unlocked Manchester United for our Eric Ten Hag manager to do a bunch of transfers in and out and then played a season uh, as Manchester United. Um, so, with that said, let's jump into the game here. So, uh, again, we're starting with a, a sweeper keeper on support. Um, going to play behind, you know, because we're playing with a very high line. So we're going to start with a sweeper keeper on support. And then we've got a wing back on support who's going to get up higher here and support these front four, kind of forming a, uh, a front five uh, um, with, uh, you know, these front four attacking players. We've got a ball playing defender. Um, now, uh, at Ajax, I had two defenders that were capable of being a ball playing defender. So there was two ball playing defenders here. However, once I moved to Manchester United, I did have to adjust the tactic a little bit due to the lack of ball playing defenders. But we'll get to transfers in a minute. Uh, so, ball play, one ball playing defender, one regular center back. And then a wing back on defend who sits back, uh, yeah, cross less often and sit narrow. So he sits back and kind of forms more of a, a back three uh, with these two players here. Um, and then uh, a holding midfielder here, sort of mirroring a um, kind of a combination of a deep lying playmaker and uh, ball winning midfielder um, takes fewer risks, shoot less often and tackle harder and hold front position. Um, so again, this is kind of the Edson Alvarez role uh, here sitting deep. And then the Ryan Graven Birch role here, uh, box to box midfielder, but gets further forward, stays wide and takes more risks. So it's kind of a combination of box to box and Mazala. Uh, there and then of course we've got an inside again an adjustment that I made from the Ajax season to the Manchester United season due to the personnel at the team originally this was an advanced playmaker on support this was the uh, Dusan Tadic role and then uh, attacking midfielder on attack uh, with moves in a channel so he kind of drifts back and forth this way a little bit kind of gets off to the side here um, either side of the advanced forward, and then of course the inverted winger. This is the Anthony role again. Has stay wider on, so he starts out really wide, uh, really hugging the touchline, and then if he has support behind him from the wing back, he can cut inside. Otherwise, gets uh, forward himself um, in the wide area. As uh, you know, if if this player has drifted over here, you know they kind of the interplay is you know they 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 do a very good job of not. Um, getting into the same area to, with two players uh, and kind of forming that, that line of five. Um, and then, so that kind of covers the individual roles there real quickly. Um, but we've got, we've got shorter passing and a low tempo, but also extreme width. Uh, so we do a really good job of retaining possession and really probing out the defense and finding our uh, opportunities. We have play out of defense and work the ball into the box as well. Uh, d distribute to either the fullbacks or the center backs with counter press, but not counter attacking. So, um, or hold shape. We have nothing selected here, just to kind of let, again, let the players make that decision for themselves whether it was a good opportunity to, to counter attack or not. 
uh, looking at c continuing on here much higher line of engagement we want these front for front uh, front players really up high pressing on uh, defenders really trying to force long balls um, back for our defensive line which is not pressed up quite as high to uh, try and win the ball back themselves and then it is standard defensive width we didn't uh, we didn't try and force them inside, and we didn't try and force them outside either. We just stuck with the, the standard defensive width there. Again, you, we used tighter marking. We triggered the press much more often, and we prevented short goalkeeping distribution because, again, we wanted these guys doing a lot of work up here, winning the ball back quickly. Um, from everything that I read, everything that I watched, that was really a tenet of Eric Ten Hunt's tactics was to win the ball back up high, uh, as quickly as possible, and then have multiple players up there um, ready to, again, resume. Not necessarily a counterattack, but again, the more counter-pressing. Uh, you multiple players up high, kind of overloading this area, preventing them from playing out of the back, winning the ball back quickly, and then having a multitude of attacking players already up here in the attacking third, ready to convert those turnovers uh, into easy opportunities. So, with uh, after discussing the tactic, let's go back and look at how we did uh, at Ajax. You can see here um, our our season in charge there. We had 321 days in charge. We won the league and we won two cups. We had 33 games won. We had five draws and eight losses across all competitions. Uh, if we look here, let's see if I can find this. Probably not going to be able to see this the way that I wanted to see it. Uh, domestic leagues. This was our season here. We had 26 wins, 4 draws, and 4 losses. With uh, 80 goals scored, 23 goals against for a plus 57 goal differential. And then uh, we can look at the Champions League. See, this was definitely where we struggled. Uh, we finished 4th in our Champions League group of... Nope, I don't remember who was in the group. Um, it was a pretty tough group, though. We Obviously, we finished fourth. Of course, Frank DeBoer didn't do any much better than next season. He also finished in fourth. Uh, the, we did win. We beat Feyenoord in the, uh, the Dutch League Cup. And then, of course, we won the, the preseason trophy against uh, PSV. So that was and then the best 11. Um, our best 11 was uh, Andre Onana. Uh, once he came back from his suspension, he was the starting goalkeeper. 22 appearances, 7.15 rating. Masraoui uh, with 35 appearances, 7.13 rating. Lissandra Mar Martinez, Jurian Timber, Nicholas Tagliafico were the best, uh, the rest of the back four there. And then Ryan Gravenberch uh, and Edson Alvarez were the two holding midfielders, although obviously Gravenberch has the more uh, attacking license uh, as those two kind of sometimes single, sometimes double pivot players uh, with five goals and a nice, really nice 7.35 rating. Anthony had uh, 11 goals and a 7.25 rating on the right wing. Berghaus was our starting attacking midfielder. Uh, Dusan Tadic was amazing with his 44 appearances, 16 goals and a 7.33 rating. Uh, we did have Sebastian Hilaire there for a significant portion of time. He had 22 goals and a 7.37 rating. Uh, he was primarily the starting forward in January. We did add uh, Adam Hlozek, and he had 14 appearances and 13 goals and a 7.65 rating. He was outstanding uh, once we added him to the team in uh, at towards the end of January. We look at our transfer history. Uh, again, we had, did have two additions. We added Victor Christensen and Adam Hlozek to this team in January. Uh, Adam Hlozek was amazing. And, of course, Victor Christensen was kind of uh, slotting in at left back. Uh, and now, I think that wraps up uh, Ajax. So, anyway, we were very successful at Ajax. And uh, I was really looking forward to our season at Manchester United. Our, our Premier League stand table... Uh, we, things did not work quite so well here at Manchester United. We had 20 wins, 9 draws, and 9 losses, uh, with 67 goals scored, 32 goals against. Um, I was a little bit disappointed I, I, you know, in how the season turned out at Manchester United. I definitely had higher expectations, although part of that was definitely due to 
uh, the large amount of um, turnover at the squad. I'm sure it, de it definitely took a long time for the squad cohesion to uh, kind of pick back up after the, the transfers in and out. So with that being said, let's go look at said transfers. Again, uh, here, so immediately our transfers in, um, the ones that were made uh, immediately before the, the season transfer over. From IX, we brought in Anthony, Lissandro Martinez, Ryan Graverberch, and Jurian Timber, all from IX. Uh, basically, Eric Ten Hag said, I want my four best players to come and play with me. Uh, so that was what happened here. Now, these obviously are a little bit misleading. These are not the full amounts. A lot of these were... Um, these were there was an upfront payment and then a lot of these were done with installments uh so it was not really 249 million dollars spent but then uh going out the first one out was uh, aaron juan basaka for 35 million dollars to newcastle uh some other players and you left for um some some prospects that were you know didn't look like they were going to have the potential to develop for the uh, squad long term so Capitalized on a couple of those, getting some of those out as well. Anthony Alonga went out on loan with a loan fee. So that was part of the money that was brought back in. But then again, uh, we needed some midfield depth, so we added uh, Corentin Tolisso for free. Diego Costa came in to be goalkeeper. And then Darwin Nunez uh, came in as well as our final signing on July 6th. Now, the rest of the players that were going out, uh, Modic left for a billion. Um... These were all expiring contracts. Juan Mata, of course, was on an expiring contract. He was leaving. Edson Cavani was leaving. Uh, some young players were leaving. Harry Maguire went to Real Madrid for $40 million. Marcus Rashford went to PSG for 60, potentially $64 million. Eric Bailey went to Sevilla for $20 million. Fred went back to, went to Ajax, uh, of all places, for $22.5 million. Phil Jones went for $5 million. Uh, Andres Perea went to Ajax for $12.5 million. Uh, and I think that was it for the main first team players. Yeah, the rest of these were young players and reserves that, again, weren't, I didn't think were ever going to be good enough to play for the first team, at least based on where they were um, in uh, Football Manager. Now, what happens in real life obviously might be different, but hopefully I haven't offended too many of the Manchester United fans with some of these players, these young players that were sold. Uh, so going back to our... Uh, Signings in. Anthony came in to play the inverted winger on attack role. Uh, had a very successful, you know, definitely an above average season. Uh, 24 starts, 4 sub appearances, 6 goals, 4 assists, 7.02 rating. You can look at his attributes here. Uh, great dribbler, great first touch. The finishing is still a little bit lacking, but pace, agility, and acceleration very quick with solid metric attributes as well. Um, plays uh, inverted winger role here quite well with the uh, the high crossing, high dribbling, high first touch. Definitely a role that he is very, very well suited for. Looking at Lissandro Martinez, we brought him in to be a ball-playing defender and to replace Harry Maguire. Um, maybe not as quick as he should be, but again, very, very good mentally, uh, with good marking, good passing, good vision, good technique. He just plays ball-playing defender uh, nearly perfectly and again he was not spectacular but certainly solid with a you know a 7.01 rating overall um, in the league and and then Ryan Gravenberch Ryan Gravenberch was ignore the orange arrows I don't know why those are there because he had green arrows for a long time and he played spectacularly again resuming his box to box slash Mazzala role uh, league league wise three goals three assists 7.16 uh, average rating just a couple of yellows, made a pretty decent amount of dribbles per game, wasn't the best shooter, but was solid passing for the midfield and also solid tackler as well. Jurian Timber didn't get a whole lot of playing time. He was kind of a third option at center back, but he had 10 starts, six appearances in the league, uh, 14 and 13 overall, 7.06 rating overall, 7.03 in the league. And then our other signings, Tolisso, again, was brought back, was brought in for some midfield depth. He had 23 appearances overall, 7.03 rating. Diego Costa played quite well as our goalie. Uh, 50 appearances, 44 allowed, 21 shutouts. You can see here his overall save numbers. Um, tipped, parried, and held. 
uh, quite a few saves, a 7.21 rating overall. And then Darwin Nunez, uh, 44 appearances, scored 20, or 44 starts rather overall, 23 goals, 6 assists, and a 7.26 rating. Uh, those were the signings in, of course, then the rest of the squad. We had uh, uh, David De Gea was, uh, we were un unable to sell David De Gea. He was on the bench for the most of the season, did have a few starts in the uh, Cups. Um, Rafael Varane was uh, very, very good as the other center back, paired with Lissandro Martinez, 7.35 rating across his 40 appearances. Scott McTominay was the uh, Edson Alvarez role as the... Uh, more defensive of the two deeper midfielders. Uh, he had a goal and five assists, a 7.15 rating, uh, 89 passes per 90 minutes. Uh, Lissandro Martin, as you can see here, he had almost 100 passes per 90 minutes, or passes completed per 90 minutes. Um, Alex Tellez uh, and Luke Shaw, both of them uh, split the time at left back. Uh, Tellez was a little bit better um, overall, I think, with a goal and six assists, a 7.26 average rating versus Luke Shaw's 7.07 .07 average rating, although their, a lot of their numbers were very, very similar. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, Dallow, or Delot, um, I forget which one that is. Uh, he played, he was at right back. He developed pretty well over the course of the season. Um, again, he's got enough speed to play right wing back. Uh, you know, solid all-around mental attributes there. Lots of 14s. Um, yeah, he was, um, you know, crossing, dribbling are all very good, uh, and, pa and passing as well. So he does really well as a wingback on support on that side. Uh, not as many assists as I would have liked from that position, but he was involved quite a bit in everything that we did. Um, and then we had, uh, we already talked about Graven Birch. Uh, we did keep Donnie Vandebeek. We were not able to sell him and he helped out. Uh, as the backup to Ryan Gravenberch, had quite a few, had 20 starts when Gravenberch had some injuries, uh, played pretty well there. Bruno Fernandez was around, he was the attacking midfielder on attack the entire season. Uh, eight goals, 11 assists, very, very solid season for him as well. Jaden Sancho was the uh, Deuce and Tottich role as the left winger on support, although we did change that to an inside forward. Although he actually did develop enough that he probably could have played advanced playmaker on support on that side. Um, and done just fine. He had four goals and ten assists, although I really struggled to kind of keep him. I think he was kind of left out of the game sometimes uh, because even though he had decent numbers here with four goals and ten assists, the average rating did not reflect uh, overall his contributions, I don't think. And then Ahmad Diallo uh, actually eventually um, passed Anthony as the right inverted winger. Uh, he had quite a bit of good development this season. Uh, and over the course of the season, kind of at, towards the end of the season, I favored him more than Anthony. He had uh, 13 goals total with 12 assists and a 7.19 rating overall, a 7.25 in his 24 uh, league appearances. Hannibal was very, very good as uh, Bruno Fernandez's backup got quite a bit of playing time and nine goals and eight assists. And then Christian Ronaldo, this is the one that's funny to me. He had 26 uh, 26 starts 17 substitute appearances scored 32 goals for a 7.41 rating uh but on just 20 just under 24 xg he managed to score 32 goals versus darwin nunez who had you know 30 xg or i'm sorry i'm looking at the wrong thing where's his xg no no, no. uh 20 xg um had 32 goals versus darwin nunez who had 23 goals on his 27 xg i found that to be you know pretty interesting uh some of the other things here to look at, um, if we go to here, we can go look at our our best 11 here. Do we have the 20? Oh, we don't have the 22. I haven't gone forward far enough to get the 22-23 best 11 yet. So, just kidding. So, we'll have to do it just um, based off of this. But, again, I think it's pretty easy to see, you know, our best 11. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be the advanced forward. Rafael Varane. Uh... Darwin Nunez, actually they're probably going to put Darwin Nunez on the left wing ahead of Jaden Sancho. Uh, Alex Tellez at left back, Costa of course at goalie. Uh, Diallo will be the right inverted winger, Bruno Fernandez, the attacking midfielder on attack. McTominay and Gravenberch made a, a pretty solid center or a central midfield pairing there. Um, uh, and then, uh, who am I missing here? Oh yeah, Diallo at right back and then of course Lissandro Martinez down there as well. But again, I'm pretty pleased with the, the player performances. It just didn't quite necessarily translate through 
onto the pitch, uh, as well as I would have liked uh, overall across all of our competitions. We, again, we were, we were fourth overall in the league, um, just beating out Arsenal uh, on goal differential for the, uh, the last Champions League spot. We were knocked down in the corner finals of the Champions League by Liverpool. We were knocked down in the fifth round of the FA Cup by Manchester City. And we were also knocked out in the semifinal of the Carabao Cup by Manchester City. Um, so we did really well against, uh, you know, all of these bullets. We struggled just a little bit with Liverpool and Manchester City. Uh, if we go here, uh, let's click on a Manchester City team. I did manage to beat them at one point early on in the season. Uh, if we look at all of our past meetings against Manchester City. So, our meetings this season were uh, this one here. So, we had a 2 nothing victory the first time we played them in the league. And then we lost one to nothing um, uh, in the League Cup semifinal. Again, this was... Uh, actually, that was a neutral site. And then we lost in the FA Cup fifth round, 3-1. Um, to one, And then we did have a draw with them at home in our final game against Manchester City, 1-1. Uh, to one. Yeah, after giving up, oh, we almost had a one another victory. We gave up a late goal after going down a man. We gave up a late goal to Phil Foden. Uh, if we look at our games against Liverpool, again, uh, you know, we had we definitely had some success against Liverpool. If we look at here, uh, we lost two to one on a, a pair of very very late goals. We had a one zero lead for uh, a long time. We gave up an equalizer to Luis Diaz and then an Alex Oxley Chamberlain ninety third minute winner. That was a very, very tough loss for me, especially since we were at home for that one. We really needed those three points, and we didn't get them. And then the FA Cup third round, we did beat them with a, pretty much a full... I, I played pretty much a full-strength squad in the League Cup, or in the FA Cup, rather, uh, to beat Liverpool 2-1 to one that time uh, with the late winner from Darwin Nunez. Kind of did the same thing to them that they did to me. They had a one nothing lead for a long time, then Jaden Sancho and Darwin Nunez got late goals. Um, and then at Liverpool in the league, uh, one to one draw with a late equalizer, ninety first minute from Darwin Nunez. And then over the course of two legs here, in the quarterfinal, we did win two to one at home, and then lost three to one uh, on the road there. And uh, so we lost four to three on aggregate, aggregate to uh, Liverpool in that one. But I, I, again, I did a decent amount of success against them. Um, it just kind of was overall. You know, we struggled a little bit, especially late in the season. We had a, a stretch here where we lost to Brentford. Uh, we lost to Wolves and lost to West Ham. You know, those those three games there were pretty tough, although these were on the road. Uh, yeah, this stretch here, actually, where we lost to Leeds, Brentford, and then Wolves and West Ham in the league, uh, along with draws to Chelsea and Manchester City. Um, you know, that stretch there towards the end of the season really pushed us away from being able to make a run at... Uh, uh, getting to the top of the table or even, you know, getting cl kind of closing the gap on the the top uh, the top group here, you know, on 89 and 84 points, 78 points. This top three kind of pulled away during that stretch as I fell back more towards, uh, you know, just barely ho holding on to fourth place finish. So, again, not as successful um, as I would have hoped um, or expected, uh, but there is the... Um, the Eric Ten Hag uh, attempt at Manchester United. Again, you can see, I think, due to the high amount of player turnover that we had, we had uh, a very high number of players out. Um, you know, you look at all of these players that left the club. We did have seven transfers in as well with Anthony, Lissandro Martinez, uh, Graven Birch, Jurian Timber, from, all from Ajax, and then Chris Corrington, Tolisso, Diego Costa, and Darwin Nunez coming in as well. But again, just the very, very high number of players going out. Um, I think our net spend was about a hundred and I think our net spend was about a hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, that's well, that's two hundred there, and then this we get fifty six of it back there. So yeah, our net spend was around a hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, you know, overall, so I think that's probably pretty realistic of the, you know, the, the amount of money that's going to be available to Eric Ten Hag this summer. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do in real life. Obviously, the expectations will be um, much higher uh, than what I accomplished, I'm sure. But 
that will uh, that will wrap things up for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any uh, comments or suggestions or any observations um, about things that you might have done differently, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. And then, of course, always uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel as well for more stuff like this or to follow along with my uh, Twitch highlights that get up loaded to this channel as well in addition to if you're interested in baseball i also have some out of the park um i have an out of the park manager only challenge that's going on now as well that you can also find on the channel but again thank you for watching and have a great day